Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video with some tips and tricks if you've never built a 3D printed plane before. Now, for those of you that watch the channel a lot, you'll know that I love to fly wings and I haven't yet got round to flying a 3D printed one. Uh, this is the wing from the, the, that I've just built and I thought it would be fun to kind of go through some of the tips and tricks. Now, there is a huge choice of designs out there for 3D printed models and if you have a 3D printer and you have the time and you have some spare plastic, it's quite a cute way to get into it. But I've not been sure about how resilient they are, how easy they are to build, how well they go together. So this is really an exploration for all of you that have been asking me to have a try at this. Now this particular one here, this just happens to be the wing of this thing. Now I've looked around and trying to find different models and find one that will kind of suit my flying style and this is the one that I've go for. This is the Eclipson White Wing. I'll put a link down below so you can go and have a look at it. There are lots of free files available however this one is one uh, that seems to suit the way that I like to fly. I don't like to go like that out of hell but to be honest this seems to have also room for FPV and flight controllers and the other pieces as well. So um, thank you to a gentleman called Steve. Uh, Steve here in the UK was very kind and actually printed this all out for me. This took eight days to print. There are a lot of parts that come with a kit when you buy something like this that files from someone like Eclipse. And so I only say a massive thank you for Steve for doing that. I just literally didn't have the time to babysit the 3D printer for eight days. And that is one of the downsides of 3D printed planes. You are going to have to have that printer running for a long time and have it pretty well dialed in. Now, also, this is made from PLA. Now, I don't do a lot in PLA, typically. I use PETG for the hobby. Uh, this is the filamentive stuff. I sent Steve a roll of filamentive, uh, the grey, just to see what that looked like. Um, not particularly sexy, is it? But uh, Steve, interestingly, fed back to me that he was very impressed with the filamentive stuff. So, again, I'll put a link down to the filamentive filament that I've used here. Lightweight PLA will give you a lighter model. Uh, but that just happened to be the stuff that I had. Filamentive, if you're listening, I would love you to do some lightweight PLA. Now, as this was my first one, I spoke to Steve, who has made dozens and dozens of these things, lots of different kinds of models and different styles, and he had some top tips. So I asked him if I could share those with you, and he very kindly agreed and actually wrote them in a little document. So I'm going to go through all the top tips. So if you're sat out there and you like to fly fixed wing, but you haven't yet gone for your first 3D printed model, um, then these are the tips. Last little thing before we get into that, you will almost certainly, as well as having to print the bits, get hold of things like carbon fiber spars, little screws to put hatches into place and things like that so just because it's a 3d printed plane and you buy the plans from eclipse and doesn't mean you have to go and you can get away without buying anything else um, i got my carbon fiber rods from 3dxr again i'll put a link down below um, they are working beautifully so let's get into the slides and i'll go through the tips so the first two tips from steve are very very similar Make sure that all the edges are as clean as possible. Use a craft knife to just remove any blobs of plastic, but also to spend time making sure that the edges are nice and clean. If you can, at the bottom of the print where it comes off the print bed, there's a little lip, which is pretty common with a lot of 3D printers. Then if you can click that with your fingernail, you need to remove it. Now I was removing it with an emery board or you can use a craft knife. I found the emery board left little scratches in the plastic that you couldn't really avoid. With a nice sharp craft knife, I was using an X-Acto and a steady hand, you can remove all of those. The longer that you spend making sure that all of the surfaces and the A, either end of the 3D print is absolutely clean and square and free of all that excess plastic, the better it's going to fit together. Definitely don't rush this. And I was holding my two pieces up as I kind of test fit them to the light to see if I could see any gap through them. And if there was, I took a little bit of emery board to the end just to make sure that those two pieces were as close together as I could before I would glue them together. 
and it will help if you lightly sand the edges for adhesion particularly if you have used some kind of release agent on your print bed like hairspray or something else that all needs to be removed but providing a little bit of a of a surface for the glue to get hold of is going to help although here i found that the ca glue that i'm using more of that in a moment is fantastic and makes a great bond if you can hold the two pieces together while it all sets up do spend a lot of time test fitting every single piece before you get the glue out it's tempting as you sat there just to kind of blast through it particularly when you've made one wing when you go into the second wing it's like oh i know what i'm doing now i'm just going to crack through this the longer that you spend and the more time you take the better it's going to be if there are little gaps, then it's not a disaster. But personally, I was taking time to make sure that the fitment was absolutely spot on. Some of the parts that come in this kit have little tabs to help with alignment. And they're incredibly useful to make sure that it's all going to fit. But again, you need to make sure that there aren't any little radiuses at the bottom of those. And any of those extra little bits that you can get your fingernail on in the inside where those tabs go into the other piece are also removed as well. If you don't, then that piece will sit proud. Again, test fit again and again and again just to try and get the fitment as close as you possibly can before you reach for the glue. Now I have 3D printed some extra tabs for those places where they haven't been printed as part of the model. Sometimes it's because those tabs didn't print just because of failure with the print job itself. Sometimes some of the parts don't have them. So the part that's typically on the print bed is all flat and occasionally it can help to add a couple of tabs into there. Particularly I found for this particular model in the body sections. Now when you take those tabs off the print bed, there is the side that's been up against the print bed, which is beautifully smooth. And then there's the rough side use the smooth side that's been against the print bed and just glue them one half into the piece that you're going to pop them on and then that will hopefully make sure that everything is as flat as possible again when you're adding tabs make sure that you're removing that kind of flashing elephant's foot as steve calls it on the inside so that they're actually in place i put a little dab of super glue when i glue them together just to add an extra bit of mechanical connection as well I've been using medium viscosity CA. I've got a couple of bottles in here specifically for this. This happens to be the stuff that I use, but and it seems to be working quite well, but you can use anything. Medium viscosity is quite nice because you only need to apply the bead to one side. And because it's medium viscosity, it doesn't kind of run away all the time. And it just kind of sits as a nice bead on all of the surfaces. So when you push the two pieces together having spent the time to make sure they're as close as possible it just wicks into all the places and it just stays where you need it to be i found the easiest way to do it is when you put the two pieces together just supply the pressure and hold them there count to 10 and then once you've done that then you can reach for a rag or a piece of tissue paper and just wipe any excess when carbon rods are needed, don't glue them in, is the advice from Steve. If you have to glue them in, then just glue them in one area because as things heat up and shrink in the, the temperatures, then potentially things can deform. And the channels might need a little bit of work to get the carbon fiber through, but I'm not gluing mine at all. In case I break apart, then I can replace that piece or reprint the wing if I have to, and then the carbon rods can be slid in because the carbon rods are quite expensive. Tip number nine is for these things here, control surfaces. Now, the way this works in this model, there is a little carbon rod that goes all the way through that goes into a little recess at each end. Be super, super careful that you're not accidentally gluing that into place i've made sure that it's free moving both actually within the control surface and obviously within each end too to give me the maximum freedom of movement and i test fit it quite a few times to make sure nothing was rubbing tip 10 is for those models that aren't like that that have some kind of flexible hinge do be careful where the glue is going and don't go mad. Again, test for everything, but just use the wicking action of the glue to get it where it needs to be. And it isn't going to go somewhere that's going to stop the hinge from working properly. And again, that is the same 
for other hinge styles too. Starting to get towards the end of the list. Last couple, uh, number 12 is do center all the servos before installing them. And we're kind of getting into the standard stuff here of how you would set a plane up. In the following video, I'm probably going to do a quick overview of how I've built it out and some tips and tricks show you how it's all gone together inside. Top tip 13 is continuing with the installation. Again, standard stuff if you're building a fixed wing, and that's to test the motor and ESC before you install it. Make sure that it's turning in the right direction for the prop that you intend to use. And then when you're happy with it, then attach the motor to the motor mount and then install the motor mount into the back of the plane. Tip 14 is about painting. Now I am probably going to keep mine in the gray. I'm probably going to cut a couple of decals out of some uh, nice orange stuff and stick it on there because gray, orange and black are kind of my flying colors, which was the idea with this. And to be honest, I could probably cover up some of the hot more yeah, seams that I did in the very early part of the build. But painting can be done tips here to the side, use light coats, paint of course adds additional weight and in the event of a crash potentially it could deform as well. So be aware of that. Lots of these 3D printed models that I see are in the raw plastic. Quite a few tend to be painted. For my initial testing I'm going to leave it as it is to try and keep it as light as possible particularly as I'm not using lightweight PLA. And the last one is to make sure that the CG and throws are set up as per the model. The Eclipse and manuals in particular are very good for this. They have actually figured all of this out, test flown all of these aircraft and figured out where the CG exactly needs to be and where the throws need to be as well. So take your time. So most of these final tips are kind of standard stuff for any plane, but I would take a little bit more care to make sure that you don't accidentally overstress a hinge or break one of the plastic pieces that you've spent so much time printing. So what has it been like for me building my first model? It has been an awful lot of fun, but the more time you take with the faces of the pieces that are about to glue together, the better it looks. Take your time, remove all that flashing. If you can run your fingernail over the end of the piece and it's catching on anything, then that needs to be removed. You kind of need to treat it as a cheap airfix model and all those same tips and tricks that you'd use to make sure that fitment is fine and putting the glue where it needs to be is absolutely how you need to approach something like this. I used an X-Acto knife to remove all that excess. It provides a much cleaner finish. And on here, you can probably see as I kind of hold it up to the light, um, you can kind of see the joins, but it isn't terrible. Um, and that's using an X-Acto knife to remove the pieces. The other wing is nowhere near as clean as this. And it, you can absolutely see where the joins are because I used an emery board to remove those little lips. And I also put an extra run of CA over the top, which if you're careful with the fitment, you really don't need. Medium CA glue is absolutely what I recommend for this. It works fantastically. And although I had accelerator, I didn't really use it because by the time you've held it into place and you've got a couple of seconds of working time to try and get the edges all lined up, and then you're just holding it as tight as you can until the CA starts to set up. And by the time you've done that and let go, it's just a simple job of wiping off any excess that's gone to the side. Using accelerator, I found is absolutely not needed. My top two tips, absolutely spend time removing all that flashing. There's lots of extra pieces on what looks like a very good 3D print that are gonna get in the way of a really good join. And the other top tip would be if you have any failed prints when you're doing this stuff, do not throw them away. I would practice gluing pieces together so that the first time you do it isn't on the real model. One of my wings is a little bit iffy until I kind of figured out the best way to do it. And hopefully by watching this video, it's helped you too. So stay tuned. You will see more of this Eclipse and White Wing in the coming weeks and months. Looking forward to sticking INR5 in it maybe even walk snail and taking it for a fly. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.